the only local radio talk show offering you the chance to ask your questions and express your opinions. From around your block to around the world, the Art Lewis Show is on 100.5 and 790 WSGW and online WSGW.com. The Art Lewis Show is presented by West Side Decorating Center. Good morning and welcome to the Art Lewis Show. This is Matt Flan from the Great Lakes Bay Regional Alliance. Filling in for Art last second. Uh, of all things, folks, Art has lost his voice. There are a lot of things you can do to be great on the radio. Losing your voice seems to be the biggest obstacle. So with that, uh, Art is off today, and I'm kind of filling in here in a pinch. So here in the last little bit, we put together what we think is going to be a great morning. I'm joined this morning by Jennifer Acosta. Uh, I can't even begin to put a job title for you. So we'll just say with Jennifer Acosta Development, good morning, Jen. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So it's Monday. There was a time change. And we're all dragging right now, right? So I think we have to have a little fun this morning and, and maybe talk about a couple things from the weekend. And I'm going to start with movies. I love movies. Jonathan, are you a movie guy? We just talked about our Oscar predictions on the morning team, and none of us have ever really watched any of the movies that were on the list. <laughs> none of us know anything about them. So No, not, not really. Not really. <laughs> so Jen did, you know, divulge that she watched Barbie. And now you have a young daughter, so you had to watch Barbie, right? Correct. It's even, required. Even if you didn't have a young daughter, though, would have you gone to watch Barbie? Absolutely. Yeah. So between us, we've probably seen two uh, of the movies. <laughs> but no, I thought it was fascinating yesterday. It's always interesting watching the Academy Awards. Um, the the couple things that really stuck out, If for those that didn't watch last night, Oppenheimer really cleaned up when it was said and done. Oppenheimer won. Uh, for best picture, best actor. Um, the one that I was ecstatic about was best supporting actor. Um, you know, it was great to see uh, Robert Downey Jr. finally win an Academy Award. Uh, it had taken a long time. And it's funny because my son came down and he's 17. He's like, ooh, Tony Stark. Like, yes, yes, that yes. is Tony Stark. Uh, but he's had such a long career, a lot of ups and downs. But for anyone that wasn't listening, his commentary was really interesting. Um, he took a little bit of a shot at the Academy. He had said, you know, something along the lines of, despite the fact that I was able to overcome my troubled childhood and the Academy, it's great to finally be here. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Um, I like that they brought back, I don't know if you guys watched, but they brought back when they were giving out the Best Actor and Best Actress Award, there was five nominees. And they brought out five former Oscar winners for Best Actor and Best Actress. And it was great to see a lot of that, um, you know, former talent on stage. And their job was to each kind of highlight and credit one of the nominees. And it was just a pretty moving moment because the the incredible actors that were on stage all at one time and then recognizing someone new. It was pretty interesting. But I will tell you, folks, if you've not watched Oppenheimer, I've heard Art talk about it quite a bit. It's really a remarkable movie. Uh, Cillian Murphy won Best Actor for it. Uh, which I thought was timely, seeing a good Irishman win it the the week of St. Patrick's Day. There was some something kind of fun to that, uh, and he talked about that pride. But if you haven't watched Oppenheimer, I would tell you to definitely do it. Uh, but as someone who's watched it one and a half times, I'll just warn you, it's really a dialogue-heavy, intense movie. So if you have someone with a blender in the background and kids running and a dog going across and you try to watch that movie, you're doomed. You have no chance whatsoever. What if you're one of those people who sits there with your family? Wait, what did he just say? Wait, what did they just say? <laughs> you're in what trouble. Say? You're in trouble. It, it was so funny. CBS Sunday Morning did a whole segment this weekend about the importance of turning on subtitles on shows. And apparently up to 52% of American viewers now have the subtitles on. Oh. And I found that interesting. You're a fellow Ted Lasso lover. I do love Ted Lasso, yes. I and you're making me want to watch Oppenheimer, but like, if I have to pay attention, I'm going to have to watch it on a plane. That's about my only chance. That, so I'm going to tell you, yes, and to make sure it's a long flight. If you're going to Atlanta, <laughs> you're doomed again. It's too short. 
So you're going to want to, you know what, go I've home. I've also heard that there's a risque scene in there. So I might make everyone around me uncomfortable. There are a couple now that you bring that up, but that is not really what I remembered from the movie. But you are correct. Because there's nothing like streaming that on a plane when you're six inches away from, from other people. <laughs> <laughs> Making everyone uncomfortable around yeah. you. You're really good at that, though. So I just say go. <laughs> but I think the main part, if you're going to watch it on the plane, you tell your husband, tell Anthony, you need a long flight. Yeah. You're heading somewhere in the Caribbean, somewhere where you can get the full three hours of Oppenheimer in. But seriously, folks, it's a remarkable movie, but you do have to pay close attention. You probably have to turn the subtitles on so that you can kind of keep up. Um, and the dialogue just never stops. It's kind of nonstop and the acting's remarkable. Uh, but it is three hours of intense dialogue. There's no other way that I can really say it. But the the story, the history, the world in which we live in, we still live kind of in that Oppenheimer world. I, I think that's pretty astounding. The other thing that kind of caught me from the weekend is uh, I think you guys know from when I am in doing the show, I'm a huge sports fanatic and I love basketball, love being around the game, have played it, coached it, have been around it my whole life. And I speak for the whole world when I just say that the NBA is an absolutely dreadful, miserable, just awful product. And furthermore, for those of us here in Michigan that have to watch the Detroit Pistons, it takes that to a whole nother level of just disgusting basketball. Tell us how you really feel. It is really bad. I'm going to tell you there's no one that's listening to this that disagrees that the NBA has become just a bad product. But I'll tell you this. Yesterday at noon, I turned on Iowa versus Nebraska, the women's basketball Big Ten championship. And I thought that was the best basketball game that I have watched. NBA collegiate men's collegiate women like period it was phenomenal basketball caitlin clark who everyone knows is the big story this year she broke the all-time scoring record in um college basketball men or women she beat pistol pete maravich she had a dreadful first half she had four points she was over 10 from three um iowa was losing by about 10 and in the second half, Caitlin Clark became Caitlin Clark, and she scored 30 points in the second half in overtime. Wow. But the way the game was played, how it was coached, how the girls fought, hustled, uh, just the, the fundamentals of the game, the shooting, the excitement, the intensity. Guys, if you're not watching women's college basketball right now, you're missing something special. I truly believe it offers the best product of how the game of basketball should look, how it's played. Uh, the women are are playing at such an incredibly high level. And I got to tell you, I'm excited to see that because, um, you know, I think for too long, the focus has always been NBA and dunks and the men and the characters. And like I said, I think that's gotten old and people have lost the feel for that. And there's something about the purity of the women's game because it's not like, you know, if you watch a men's collegiate game, if there's a 6'11 guy and you throw it up towards the rim, he goes and dunks it. And while well, it looks great, it's really that impressive. You're 6'11, man. Like, you're supposed to do that. There's something about the women's game because it's played under the rim and the concepts, the fundamentals, you name it, was great. So I'm excited for the NCAA women's tournament more than I am the men's tournament, definitely more than I am the NBA. But I thought it was, you know, kind of an interesting thing to watch over the weekend where you're like in, in the the ratings are showing it and if you looked at the arena there was a game last weekend iowa played ohio state and women's basketball the top, two top teams in the big 10 the lowest ticket price to go to that game was 500 dollars a person wow. for a women's basketball game and i think that just shows some of the growth of the sport uh, many have argued for years that as an example the u.s women's soccer team is a better product than the UN, U.S. men's national team. They definitely compete at a higher level. They play a, a certain style. Um, so it's just kind of interesting to watch the the women's sports kind of elevate to this level and, and kind of see that. So I've got nothing. I, I'm a hockey mom. So my weekend was our last, our last travel hockey game of the season. Fall hockey is over. And did I see, did your son get a penalty <laughs> as the goalie? Yeah, is my that son, true? My son got a penalty on Fridays. On Friday. <laughs> so if if we're reviewing this correctly, someone skated into him and he didn't appreciate it, did he? 
Right. And, you know, a goalie can't go to the penalty box. So another player has to go and take the penalty for him. So his numbers up on the clock. And yeah, he um, he he gave a player a nice shove after the whistle. I know his mother. This all sounds correct here on a Monday morning. So <laughs> I would blame his father, but yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, folks, it's uh, the Monday after daylight savings time. We needed to just relax for a few minutes and talk about a few fun subjects, but we are going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to jump into regionalism, regional housing, things that are going on uh, here that are really impacting us as we move forward to grow this region, but after these messages. It happens after every commercial building gets built. That looks great, boys. Wow, what a change. The owners are going to be thrilled. Even after cleaning up the garage or shed. That leftover scrap metal can be a burden, but it doesn't have to be. And it can make you some cash. Rifkin Scrap Iron and Metal is a metal recycling company that'll pay you cash and recycle your metal for the future. Rifkin Scrap Iron and Metal also makes it easy. We can provide containers for industrial manufacturing facilities and small specialty shops for moving and storing scrap metals. Looking to scrap a vehicle? We got you. Rifkin Scrap Iron and Metal in Saginaw, just north of the Dow Event Center. Also located in West Branch, one mile off I-75 and M76. Schedule a car pickup or check metal prices now at rifkin-co.com. Rifkin Scrap Iron and Metal, recycling today for tomorrow. It's easy to think all money managers are pretty much the same. But at Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Different? How? You sell high commission investment products, right? No. Fisher Investments doesn't sell any commission-based investment products. Well, you must earn commissions on trades. Nope. Never at Fisher. We're a fiduciary obligated to act in our client's best interest. It's the highest standard of care for a financial advisor. How do you know what's in their best interest? We get to know our clients and then tailor a portfolio based on their goals and needs. But you probably sneak in some hidden and layered fees. No, we have one transparent management fee structured so we do better when our clients do better. Wow, you really do look out for your clients. That's because our top priority is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. It might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments, clearly different money management. Investments and securities involve the risk of loss. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is the Fox Business Report. A proposed hotel merger is dead. Choice Hotels, parent company of Quality Inn, Comfort Inn, and other brands, is abandoning its $7 billion takeover offer for Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. Wyndham is parent company of La Quinta, Ramada, Days Inn, and Super 8. Choice had been attempting to take over Wyndham for about a year. Wyndham's board rejected the proposed deal, saying it was too low and also might not receive approval of regulators. Bitcoin is trading over $71,000 this morning after UK regulators allowed some crypto-related investments. Reddit is preparing to launch its stock. It plans to offer 22 million shares on the New York Stock Exchange, priced at $31 to $34 a share. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Ginny Kosolda, invested in you. You can live out your master chef dream when you find a professional on Angie to tackle your dream kitchen remodel. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well, inside to outside, repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. Listen to this station anytime, anywhere on Odyssey. Odyssey is your new audio home for all the music, news, sports, and podcasts that matter to you. Odyssey. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. Hi, I'm Martha Stewart. Every year, more than 4 million pets enter shelters here in the United States. My friends at American Humane have been helping animals since 1877. The goal is to ensure that pets have a safe shelter, especially during natural disasters. 
Adopting a shelter pet allows shelters to help more animals awaiting care. Please consider adopting today and take some time to learn more about American Humane's other work at AmericanHumane.org. The WSGW Morning Team. The WSGW online poll, the Supreme Court ruling regarding former President Trump. The U.S. Supreme Court, in a unanimous ruling, barred states themselves from disqualifying candidates for federal office. The opinion from the court included the statement, We conclude that states may disqualify persons holding or attempting to hold state office, but states have no power under the Constitution with respect to federal offices, especially the presidency. For her part, Justice Amy Coney Barrett wrote, All nine justices agree on the outcome of this case. That is the message Americans should take home. Whole question, do you accept or reject the U.S. Supreme Court ruling regarding former President Trump? We offer up answers this way. I accept it simply because it's the Supreme Court. I accept it only because it was a unanimous ruling. I reject it only because it involves former President Trump. Or I reject it, the candidate doesn't matter. We want to know what you think. Head to WSGW.com, scroll down the homepage, and find the online poll box. Your morning team, 5.30 to 9 on WSGW. Good morning and welcome back to the Art Lewis Show. This is Matt Flan from the Great Lakes Bay Regional Alliance filling in for Art today. Folks, Art lost his voice. So when you lose your voice... Apparently, radio becomes impossible, so happy to kind of come in uh, in a pinch. Uh, Jonathan Dent called yesterday, asked for the right-handed pitcher to come in in relief, so here we are. So glad that we can help out, and uh, hope Art feels better quickly and gets uh, back in here this week. So I'm joined here by Jenna Casa with Jennifer Acosta Development, and uh, Jen, I want to start with kind of your odyssey, because we always love to talk about odyssey. the Great Lakes Bay region. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you went through an odyssey. So tell me. So you grew up in Essexville, correct? Um, I am what I refer to as like a regional brat rather than an army brat. So um, born in Midland, raised in Freeland, moved to Bay City, graduated high school out of Essexville, um, went away for college, moved back to the region, lived in Saginaw, and then moved back to Midland. So when you move away, how long were you gone for? uh 10 years 10 years and did you leave immediately after high school um yeah i i went away to college i did a year at grand valley state went to illinois then did grad school at university of miami and then how long were you down in the miami metro area um about five years about five years yeah so in that time you meet your husband right you yep. you get married you're living in miami yep it is 87 degrees and sunny every day there's palm trees oceans the weather's magnificent yeah you looked at yourself and said it's time to move back to the great lakes bay region um that was my husband's call <laughs> i was pretty dead set that i was not interested and he's in from miami back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, starting a family can, can definitely, you know, look at that, that transition. And the biggest thing for us was, was quality of life. Like it wasn't just going to be the, the two of us anymore. Um, and where did we really want to raise a family and what were our values? And at the end of the day that happens, right? You go, okay, we have to raise these children and we're going to have kids and we need a place for them to grow up. And then suddenly when you compare Miami to the Great Lakes Bay region, Miami suddenly has a ton of negative attributes in terms of raising children versus here in this region, doesn't it? That it does. That it does. Um, and, you know, we still have family here, my side of the family is here. So being able to raise kids, you know, with their cousins, um, with their grandparents was, was a really big deal for us. I, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. I followed a very similar road except for I was gone 18 years, mm -hmm. but the same thing had, had two children and, um, understood that our parents would not live forever and they didn't know their aunts and uncles and cousins. And we had lived in Richmond, Virginia, and we were dealing with a lot of senseless crime, senseless yeah. murders. And, um, uh, you know, probably the biggest thing is we just remember there was one time we got really bad food poisoning from pizza. And we weren't even functional human beings. And our son was a few months old. And it was like, we had no one to call to take care of him. I yeah. mean, it, it, we ended up calling friends. But I'll, I'll even use the term loosely. Now, thankfully today, there's some of our best friends in the world. But it was like, hey, please take our three-month-old child. And uh, we'll let you know when we pick him up. It's hard when you live 
out of an area when you don't have a support structure around you. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, especially going through parenting, like when people say it takes a village, it really does take a village and it it takes community. Um, I know kind of that American cultural ideal is that we all thrive for so much independence, but man, interdependence and having a network you can rely on is a pretty big deal. So you move back home and you have your network. Yep. And one of your great network pieces is your dad. Yep. Rod Hildebrandt. So when you first moved back, for our listeners that may not know, you guys took on a few projects in Bay City, didn't you? I did. Um, so not right when I first moved back. Um, in Miami, I had worked for an affordable housing real estate development firm and fell in love with the work. And then I wound up working for my dad's company, which was home health care and hospice. So I was flying around the country. Um, that was another reason to move up here. The corporate office was here. I was going to be a mom. I didn't have to travel so much. Um, and I tried the family business long enough to know that it wasn't for me. So after we'd had our second, I found myself really not going back to work and instead decided to have a newborn and also go back for a second uh, graduate degree. <laughs> So I went for that graduate degree in real estate development because my master's is in international administration and sustainable development. And I wanted that more formal training in development. Um, my father was looking at expanding his company into the Bay City Times building. And then um, while we were under contract, he got an offer to sell the company. Um, and he's always kind of grown, grown companies, grown businesses and, and eventually sold them off. So he kind of looked at me and said, great, you're a developer. Let's still buy this building. The community needs it, figure it out. So I had six weeks to come up with a concept and, um, build out a team and redevelop a building. So we bought the old Bay city times building. We are the second ever owners and it's 120 year history. Um, and converted the entire property into uh, lofts. It's really remarkable because as newspapers um, slowly uh, combined and and a lot of newspapers went out of business, the Bay City Times exists today, but not mm -hmm. in the manner that it did where they had the big printing presses and they had literally dozens of employees and salespeople. And it's just, it's a completely different industry. So yeah. The long and short of it was you would have had a pretty large abandoned building in downtown Bay City being just completely vacant. Um, whenever you leave those buildings, they fall apart, right? So there was mm -hmm. the risk that if no one really did something to that building, what would happen? For our listeners, what does that building look like today now? Yeah, so when we acquired it, it had been vacant for about a year and a half, maybe two years, um, and looked just kind of dilapidated. Um, I think you were one of the people I, I took through it pretty early on. Maybe we were in, in demolition there. Um, now what we've done is we really uh, looked for consistency first and foremost. There were so many different additions put on the building as the industry kind of changed and evolved that going back to like that 1939, um, I do a lot of historic preservation, making all of the windows consistent. We added an addition on it so that we could kind of make the, the financials work for the project. And if you were to go inside, um, you know, we really elevated what was there. Like that's a big piece of us. Like how do we take the character that exists within the building whether it's, you know, the moldings and the office spaces and keeping them pristine, keeping like the editor's cabinetry and whatnot in place and um, used within the apartments. And then also taking the really industrial press spaces and making them more industrial and aesthetic. So um, right now, if you were to go by there, I mean, you're going to see plants in the windows, people walking their dogs and a life where there was just kind of nothingness. So today... Is that is that building full and are they rentals or do people purchase? It is full and they're rentals. Um, with any historic preservation project, you're actually required to maintain ownership. So we rent them. That's outstanding. We're going to take a quick break. I want to hear more about your other projects in Bay City. And then let's talk about just kind of how housing looks right now in the region and how that's impacting us after these messages. 
The 17th annual Kids at Heart fundraiser is coming to your Mid-Michigan Children's Museum with the theme, and the winner is. Adults 21 and older, join us from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Thursday, March 14th for a night of silent auctions, live auctions, games, raffles, and more. Treat yourself with From Scratch Catering, Bavarian in desserts, drinks, and game show themed games. With live performances by Todd Michael Hall with Amy Petty and Frank and Jude. Tickets are $35 per person and can be purchased at the museum, including the day of, or online at michildrensmuseum.org and scroll down for the big red button. 315 West Genesee Avenue, Saginaw. Food, fun, and fellowship. Kids at heart. Welcome to retirement. Now, replace your paycheck. To local financial coach Kevin Ray, this is what retirement planning is all about. Building monthly paychecks and how you build those monthly paychecks is going to determine how well in retirement you're going to enjoy it. So sit down and build a good framework and it starts with income. So build your framework with Kevin and the team at Insight Folios today by calling 888-885-PLAN. That's 888-885-7526. Cashback is not available on gas in New Jersey and Wisconsin. Hey, good morning. You're heading the airport, right? Yeah, thanks for checking. I like the car. How long have you been a rideshare driver? About three years now, but I really enjoy it. Isn't it hard to make money these days with the price of gas being so high? Not for me. I use Upside, the free app that gives you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get real money back when you get gas with the Upside app? Yep, I get real cash back every time I get gas. Does that actually add up to anything? I'll make around $200 to $300. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the Upside app now. Download the free Upside app now to earn real cash back every time you buy gas. Use promo code RADIO for an extra 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. You can cash out anytime, right to your bank account, PayPal, or a gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code RADIO for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code RADIO. What's holding you back from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's lessons take just 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes isn't long. Nope. And they're fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make languages fun and engaging. You might even forget you're learning. And Babbel's lessons are built around real life. Babbel teaches language skills you'll actually use about travel, business, relationships, and more. You'll learn what matters most to you. Plus, Babbel's lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. Just three weeks? Even better. Since Babbel's lessons are voiced by real native speakers, you'll get pronunciation just right and be able to carry on conversations with confidence. Learning a language with Babbel doesn't take long. And with Babbel, it isn't hard. It's It's perfect. perfect. Get Babbel. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. Every day, Cintas service reps help businesses get ready for the workday. They provide freshly laundered workwear delivered every week. Mats, mops, restroom and cleaning supplies, first aid and safety products to help your employees stay safe. They even test and inspect fire extinguishers and emergency lights. Cintas helps keep your business running smoothly. See what Cintas can do for you. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Well, switch to Pure Talk today and you'll get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. Now, qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and, of course, mobile hotspot. Just dial pound 250, say the keyword Pure Talk, claim your eligibility for your free brand new Samsung 5G smartphone. Start saving on wireless today and switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. He's hit in the left, but do around third, and he will score without a throw. Javi Baez delivers. The countdown is on. 17 days until opening day. Your home for the Tigers is WSGW. It's the Storm Master Exterior Studios of WSGW. And WSGW is online with Storm Master Exteriors. Good morning and welcome back to the Art Lewis Show. This is Matt Flan filling in for Art, who's out today with laryngitis, making radio very challenging. And I'm here with Jenna Costa with Jennifer Acosta Development. And we're chatting a little bit about her background and her return here to the region. So you told us about the Bay City Times building, but apparently that was not enough. 
you decided to pull the cheese grater <laughs> in downtown Bay City, the former Chemical Bank building. And uh, I think everyone understands what we're talking about. It looked like a cheese grater at the corner of Center and Washington. And you had an opportunity to redevelop that building as well. What led you down down to that project, Jen? Um, yeah, I... Yeah, that's what we said when you yeah. took that one on. We're like, yeah, yeah. It it was a it was a pretty complicated and, and complex project. Um, I think as everyone knows, I'm a, a a pretty big fan of historic buildings, and I do not shy away from difficult things. So going ahead and and acquiring a building that was kind of set for. Um, potential demolition to become a drive-through bank, like in the heart of my hometown, wasn't something I was going to stand by and and let happen. Um, so we acquired it and did a full remodel, um, redeveloped the building from being, you know, five floors of, of vacant commercial space. It had been vacant for about three years at this time um, and converted it into 26 apartments. Um, a restaurant, and now we have um, both a barbershop and a hair salon on our on our main level. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I think everyone that had grown up in Bay City, right? Because what year was the that metal cheese grater looking material put on the building? So it was put on in in 1960. Um, essentially, like multiple generations do not recall the the original facade of that building. Um, and then we had to unveil just a section of it to prove to the federal government and to demonstrate that we had enough of the, um, they would say the historic fabric, the architecture remaining that we could redevelop it because we actually had the instance where um, both facades were considered historic. One was over 50 years old. So we had to decide which route we were going to take. Jen, it was shocking when it came off because <laughs> all, and, and let's be fair, you guys invested a, a lot of money into yeah. you know basically restoring the former glory of the building on the outside yeah but when it was done i think everyone was in shock of why in the world did anyone ever cover that gorgeous building with such unique architecture with just straight metal cheese grater you know material it looked ridiculous compared to, to the finished product again of its original glory. It was a, a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. It's shocking in that era that, that all these entities did that, isn't it? That's probably the question I've, I've been asked most often in my life. Why did they cover that up? Um, I don't really have an answer for for that, but happy to be the one that, that removed the slip cover and, and brought her back to life. So my question for you when we talk about housing in this region is this. You'll hear some people get frustrated that it seems like all the attention is on the downtowns and whether it's uptown uh, original work done at the Shear building or uh, by the, the Rowley family really took some, some big steps with Jenison and the boathouse and mm -hmm. people sometimes get frustrated because they're like all this money gets invested downtown yet the neighborhoods seem to be struggling. What is the balance there and what's going on? Because everyone, I think, assumes that like there's a bunch of vacancies in these great downtown buildings and there's not. They're all full, correct? They are really full. Um, and Bay City had a housing study done in 20, 2016, I want to say, by CZB that actually said even looking at the neighborhoods in the housing market that strategically Bay City had to focus all of their efforts and their economic development power downtown in order to revitalize the community. So that was the premier focus is, you know, without a strong core, you can't really even get the flow that you need within those neighborhoods. Um, so that was first and foremost. And now we're in a little bit of a different state. We've we've come a really long way with our downtowns, I'd say collectively across the region. There's still room to grow, of course, but we are also um, looking at kind of a national, statewide, and local housing crisis in different ways um, that require us to focus on the neighborhoods more and more. Yeah, so as we look at it, you know, I grew up in the south end of Bay City near St. Stan's Church. Mm -hmm. And I remember growing up in the 80s, I mean, Every four days, you were mowing your lawn, right? If a shutter had paint going off it, you were out there with a paintbrush. There was this deep pride of community 
and how neighborhoods looked. And, you know, if we had been on vacation and the grass had gotten too long, uh, when we came home, uh, the, the nice lady down the street had left a note on our door saying, hey, cut your grass. We don't do that in this neighborhood. A lot of those neighborhoods in Bay, Saginaw, are really have been struggling over the course of the last 20 years. And the, the housing stock's a little bit older, right? The average age of a lot of homes in those communities, yeah. the, they're older homes. Do you see uh, a trajectory in which that's going to change? Um, I see a trajectory in which I'd, I'd like to help be a part of the solution. Okay. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what those solutions may look like. We are all anxiously awaiting the approach of spring. Longer, warmer days, trees budding, perennial flowers blooming, and the return of our state bird, the robin. What we're not looking forward to is rain, flooding, thunderstorms, and of course, power outages. Oh, no! No one wants to be caught off guard with a sump pump problem during a heavy downpour. Reamer Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning can help you plan ahead to avoid a flooded basement. They sell and install primary electric pumps as well as water and battery-powered backup pumps. Reamer Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning can also bring you back to normal from a wet basement with maintenance or replacement of a flooded water heater, furnace, or boiler. Trust the experts with your plumbing and heating mechanical needs in your home. Do you have a family doctor? Do you have a family plumber? Reamer Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, 989-792-8738 or find them on the web at reamerplumbing.com. Art Lou is here at Quick Lane Freeland next to my car dealer, McDonald Ford. Quick Lane Freeland is a one-stop shop for oil changes, brakes, tires, batteries, and they work on Chevys, Fords, Toyota, Honda, Jeep, Dodge, and all makes and models. To keep your car and truck in good shape, here's a tip from John at Quick Lane Freeland. Your car battery might be good in the summer, but in the wintertime? Frigid temperatures can weaken a battery to lose up to one half of its power. The only way to tell if a battery will be good is to have it tested, which takes less than 10 minutes. Most car batteries only have a two to three year life expectancy. Batteries should also be inspected regularly for corroded terminals and loose cables. Don't get stranded in the cold with a no start dead battery. At Quick Lane and Freeland, we check and test batteries as a free customer courtesy. Thanks, John. Quick Lane Freeland works on all makes and models of cars and trucks. Keep your vehicle in tip-top shape at Quick Lane Freeland next to McDonald Ford. Online betting can be fun. It's kind of like whitewater rafting. The rush of excitement. The thrill. Well, until your raft is heading straight for a huge waterfall. For tips that will help keep you afloat, go to don'tregretthebet.org. Sponsored by the Michigan Association of Broadcasters and the Michigan Gaming Control Board. Have a gambling problem? Call the Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-270-7117. Menards has the best in-stock selection of AC2 pressure-treated decking and lumber. AC2 pressure-treated thick decking is 15% thicker than standard 1-inch decking, providing a stronger, more durable deck surface. Plus, get free estimates fast in store or online with our deck design programs and conveniently pick up your materials in our drive through lumber yard. Head into Menards and get started on your deck project today. Save big money at Menards. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into. And that is MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save many families up to 500 bucks a month. And that is huge. But it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The member satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works, too. It's been around for 30 years. Members have shared more than $5 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, really, you can save a ton and like it better. Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want to plan you're happy with, you can call right now. You'll get a price within two minutes. So see what you can say. This is a very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. Call 877-26-BIBLE. That's 877-26-BIBLE. 877-26-BIBLE. 
News coverage. Donald Trump is now on the brink of clinching the Republican presidential nomination. November 5th is going to go down as the single most important day in the history of our country. A high stakes State of the Union speech. A measure to protect IBF providers is now law in Alabama. News. The state theater in Bay City has declared bankruptcy and is stopping all operations. A former state police trooper was sentenced this week for hitting a Saginaw man in 2022. News coverage on WSGW. Good morning and welcome back to the Art Lewis Show. The Art Lewis Show is sponsored by West Side Decorating Center. Visit them at 5789 State Street in Saginaw or online at westsidedecoratingcenter.com. So this is Matt Flan. I'm filling in for Art this morning and I'm joined here with Jenna Cawson. We're talking about housing and in the last segment we talked uh, about her projects downtown and the investments that's made in downtown. Uh, but the gap that now exists in housing here in the region, every community, Jen, uh, looks a little bit different, right? In Bay, um, it may be uh, a lot of properties uh, that have a lot of rentals, uh, a lot of properties that need real investment, uh, need to be rehabbed. Mm -hmm. In Midland, that could look different. In Midland, um, there's a lack of maybe middle housing or new housing for the young professional who can't afford a lot of the homes in Midland, but at the same point, there isn't anything at their their price point. So this region has some serious housing challenges, mm -hmm. and you said there's some solutions, and I know our listeners would love to hear what some of those solutions may be. Give us an idea of what you're thinking. So as you said, it, it really does depend on where you're at. I think the biggest piece is how do we get housing choice and how do we get housing stock that actually represents um, our community members, right? So when I say housing choice, I tend to mean that no matter which city you're in across the region, we're overbuilt for, for simply single family housing. Um, the only way that we're going to be able to uh, retain talent and retain people is if we have different options for everyone at any stage of life that they're in. Right. So not everyone wants a single family home and a lawn to mow and shutters that they have to maintain and repaint all the time. Right. A lot of people want more flexibility. Um, this really exacerbated, I think, through COVID when people with remote work and everything, they were like, let me pick the community in which I want to live in. Um, do they have the housing choice and the quality of life that I'm looking at? Younger generations, which I feel like I'm dating myself when I say that now. I mean, you've got younger generations that kind of choose. They would rather have a much more turnkey lifestyle so that they can travel more, explore um, those kinds of pieces. And they're not necessarily subscribing to that, you know, four bedroom house, two car garage lifestyle that has, has really been that American ideal. But here I'm sitting across from Jonathan Dent, who's, can we refer to you as a millennial, Jonathan? I think I'm technically Gen Z. You're Gen actually. Z? Oh, you're but, Gen Z? I'm an yeah. elder millennial. Yeah, so know. he's Gen Z, but you literally just decided to take over an old family home in Hemlock, right? Yeah, so you're you were younger. Saying, you were yeah. saying something about a three-bedroom, two-car garage. I've got mm -hmm. a four-bedroom, four-car garage. So <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, uh, I'm the sixth generation to move into that house. Uh, in that. our family so it is fun to hear that maybe that next generation even coming up behind the millennials might be mm -hmm. heading a little bit more towards home ownership jonathan the dog yet do we have a dog no dog yet next on the list no. yeah. um <laughs> do you see a world like let's say you and i we care about our community right mm -hmm. and we say okay the, these neighborhoods need to be rehabilitated Yep. And there have been some fascinating things for, for those that know Wayne and Katie Hoffman. They, they did a remarkable project in Bay City on Grant Street, taking an old home and completely redeveloping to its former glory. Let's say you and I right now started the Jen and Matt company, and we're going to go and we're going to target some homes in a specific area in one of our communities. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's Saginaw. Given today's current interest rates, the price of materials, can we even go in and rehab five homes and sell them and make a profit? Or is that currently not even an attainable option for our communities? Um, yeah, you'd be upside down on it. 
<clears throat> it's a lot easier to just throw money off a rooftop, to be quite honest. Um, I've been part of conversations with state of Michigan agencies. And over the last couple of years, we have created some new tools um, to help people who really care about their community make it work and make the numbers work. So there's some new tools that are part of the solution. So one of the things that I hear frequently, and this is a base city specific, that a ton of the, the residential real estate is owned by companies who then rent out. And a lot of those companies aren't even based here in the Great Lakes Bay region. They're companies from out of the area that own these homes. Is there anything regulatory that local government should be doing to put more of these homes back into the hands of people that are from the community that care about the community and want to invest in the community? Or does the market just really not allow for it? And that's capitalism. That's just how it works. Uh, capitalism does definitely get in the way. You know, it's a it's a private market economy. So, you know, local code enforcement can do things from the exterior. And, you know, you've got one person that'll check a rental every year for some, some basic checklist items. Um, but it's not necessarily doing the kinds of things that we as locals want to see happen, right? Uh, housing is one of those elements that when you think of like the hierarchy of needs, like it is shelter, it is your financial investment, it is some of that self-actualization, right? Like when your neighbor cuts their, their yard, you're like, oh, my grass looks too tall. Like I've, I've got to make some improvements. So there's a lot that we need to do, I think, overall in order to hit it. Great. Well, Jen, I could talk to you about this all day, <laughs> and I have a feeling you have more up your sleeve. We'll be back after these messages. How is your child doing in school this year? Do you feel they are not performing as well as they could? Did you know that this could be due to visual performance? At Associates in Eye Care, they help you determine if your child's vision is not performing as well as it could. They don't just give your child glasses. They evaluate the entire visual and ocular system to detect, treat, and prevent visual disorders and ocular diseases. To make an appointment with Dr. Cox, Dr. Kazmarek, or Dr. Angle, call 792-8686. Associates in Eye Care caring for our patients as we would want to be treated. Spring is around the corner. Have you purchased your membership to the Saginaw Children's Zoo yet? Visit the SaginawZoo.com to purchase yours today. Find us on Facebook. See you in the spring. Back in my children's room. How do you do? Attorney Joe Cordell. Business owners and professionals face special challenges in divorce court. In addition to everything else going on, they have to contend with allegations that they are earning more than they are, coupled with claims on their business or practice itself. Clients with assets depend on their divorce lawyer skills in these matters. And that's why it's so important to hire someone that has those skills. Offices in Detroit, Ann Arbor, and Grand Rapids. Schedule an appointment with one of Cordell & Cordell's attorneys online at CordellCordell.com. Hi, I'm Martha Stewart. Every year, more than 4 million pets enter shelters here in the United States. My friends at American Humane have been helping animals since 1877. The goal is to ensure that pets have a safe shelter, especially during natural disasters. Adopting a shelter pet allows shelters to help more animals awaiting care. Please consider adopting today and take some time to learn more about American Humane's other work at AmericanHumane.org. That's all for this hour of the Art Lewis Show, presented by Westside Decorating Center. I want to thank Jennifer Acosta with Jennifer Acosta Development for joining me here uh, in this first hour. Uh, coming up in the next hour, you're going to have a combination of myself and Jonathan chatting on a variety of topics. Uh, before that, the news with the CBS National and International News, then the state and local report with the WSGW Newsroom. Broadcasting from the Stormmaster Exterior Studios, WSGW, Saginaw, Bay City, Midland, WSGW-FM, Carlton. This 
is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by Progressive Insurance. I'm Deborah Rodriguez. We begin in Jamaica, where Secretary of State Antony Blinken is scheduled.